If you're a beginner of Unreal Engine 5 and you want to learn some basic tips about features in Unreal Engine, let me show you some of them. Welcome to the video. You opened a new project and you went to file and new level and you choose any of those empty level and you just want to handle all lighting by yourself. So what you can do, you can come here, quickly add the projects and you can add every kind of light but this is not the best way to do it. I will show you some easiest way you can handle your post-processing and lightning in the scene. So go to window and click environment light mixer. In here, it will give you a tab like that. Click normal and create skylight, atmospheric light, sky atmosphere, volumetric cloud, and hypoc. So only from this panel, you can change your all of your lightning settings. Also, you can click only show atmospheric lights and it will only show the atmospheric lights of them if you add any kinds of point light or planar light. Let's go to normal plus advanced and then you can see the advanced channel too. Let's say you have tens of, maybe hundreds of lights in your scene and you need to handle all of those without doing it, without using Outliner. So what you're gonna do, go to Window and click Light Mixer. And in here, it will show you every kind of light in your scene. Right now, it's not getting the skylight and atmosphere, it is only showing the light sources. For example, you can add point light, rect light, spotlight, you can just right click on your mouse, go to edit, and you can rename them. And you can rename them from Outliner Spotlight 2. So you can see the changes. And this will give you opportunity to handle your lights without searching them in Outliner. Or without doing anything, you can just download my Dynamic Sky plugin from the link in the description. And what you can do, you're just going to take this blueprint class and drag into the scene and you have everything you need. Also, you can change time of your day as like you want. In night settings, you can just close to volumetric cloud for now. You have stars, you have moon, you can turn off and turn down if you want. Let's move to the new feature. Let's say you made a great scene that with some cool high-end graphics and you want to take some screenshots or maybe a little cinematics, but the default render system in Unreal Engine not enough for you. You want more accurate and realistic lights. So what you can do, you can open path tracing and you can take screenshots with them. How are you gonna do it? Go to edit and project settings. In here type hardware ray tracing and click support hardware ray tracing, click yes and ray tracing shadows. And after that, you need to restart your Unreal Engine editor, then come back. When you open back the Unreal Engine, I just opened the starter map and I just changed some light setting. Right now, I have only two light source, this one and this one, and I have Hyde Park. As you see, even I don't have any directional light or sunlight in the sky because of the high fog, we can see the sky is pretty clear. So let's say you want to get the best shot as possible and most accurate lightning as possible as like iRay in Maya and Cycle in Blender. So what you're gonna do, you will go to Lit and click Path Tracing. And it will start the denoise and clean the scene for you and it will make the most accurate lighting ever. How you can change the settings of the Path Tracer Go to post process and type path tracing. And in here, there's a lot of settings you can use. You can reference atmosphere, depth of field. You can change your bounce setting, sample per pixel, and what kind of component you will use with your path tracer. And with this way, you can create the most accurate shots, accurate lightning shots ever. 
Pathracer working with completely different rendering systems. It's based on randomizing and bouncing than, and it's more complex system than standard ray tracing. So it's done, and as you can see, we're getting the best render as possible. By the way, uh, I will give you a little tip about in editor in general. For example, I'm just going to click this button to not search thing I typed. So as you can see, there's a lot of section is opened. You don't have to just go all over the way and click closed. Instead of that, just click the settings in here and click collapse all categories. It will collapse everything. I will give you one little useful tips and also it's a feature in Unreal Engine. For example, you just came here and you click blueprint and you will change one of your blueprints. I'm just going to go back to lit mode. And let's say you will open this explosion pack. When you click it, it might create a new window or it might create a window in the same tab. So how you can do it? Just go to editor preferences from edit to editor preferences. Go to editor preferences and in here there's a asset editor open location. If it is default, it will always create a new window. So in here, just click main window. So whenever you open the different blueprint, it will always open in the same window as you see. Also, let's say you created a bunch of levels, but whenever you open your project, it's every time showing you a default map and you want to change it. You want to see your own level when you open the editor. For this, just go to edit and project settings. In here, go to maps and modes, and you can change the editor startup map, which, whichever map you want. Also, I will give you a one more useful feature, also tip from the editor preferences. And it's that when you're building your lights, maybe you open a scene for the first time or you're saving it and coming back. When the your computer encoding your light maps, if you have, uh, it might work slowly. So how are you going to fix that? Go to editor preferences and go to general to experimental. And in here you can enable multi-thread light map and shadow map encoding, and it can work a lot while you're working with bigger light maps. I will give you one last good feature and also tip from the editor preferences again. Uh, in the level editor, when you come to play, you can change the game gets mouse control, you can use your mouse in the game or not. Or if you're working for mobile, you can use mouse for touch. Let's say you trying and making quality control for your game, but uh, in your own, in the computer, you can use mouse for touch settings. In the game viewport settings, you can change the viewport resolution to check the performance or you can just see the bigger or lower resolution for any kind of process you want. I will give you one more tip uh, about Nanite. I didn't see so many people talking about it, but in the mesh and in your materials, if you're seeing a distortion like that, it is because of the Nanite because Nanite cannot work properly in the scene right now. So what you can do, you can just disallow Nanite from your rendering and advanced section, and it will fix the problem for you, as you see. And let's say you wrote a bunch of console commands and you don't remember which one of them is working in the level or which one of them not, or you don't remember what you typed, maybe you just find on the web. So what you can do for it, just go to window tab and in here click console variables. And in here you can see all of the commands you typed and it's running or not from the values, or you can add new console variables from here. This console variable tabs is pretty useful for me because when I'm doing some cinematographic levels, 
I can see what kind of console commands I'm using in the scene. Let me give you one more tip about materials. When you have a scene and you just have different, maybe hundreds of different materials in the scene, but whenever you want to adjust some settings about this material, you don't have to go just find your material, click it, and inside of here, just multiply something as like I do in here. Instead of that, you can create an instance and you can change your values from there. So how are you gonna do it? I'm just gonna go to normal map, Click and I will convert this into parameter and I will say normal. I'm going to save it. So when I go back to this tab, I'm just going to create right click and create a material instance. Okay, and apply this to here. And when I open material instance, as you can see, I can change my normal map. From here, what about you want to adjust the value, not the normal map itself? What are we going to do? I'm just going to create a parameter. I'm just uh, holding one and clicking left click on my mouse, and there's a only value. So I will convert to parameter and I will say normal density. I think I typed wrong, but it's okay. Uh, Connect this to here. For example, default value, let's say two. Slider mean one, four. Save it. So when I go back to map, if I went to material instance, as you can see, I have a normal density. So when I move to something like one, let's make it zero. Let's see. As you see, there's no normal map, but we can make it two. Four is not affecting so much because of the normal map itself, but we can use this parameter system for every kind of thing in the scene. For example, let's say you want to multiply your specular texture, uh, which is the base color. Maybe you want to add more reddish or you want to add something else, but you don't want to go every time to inside of your material. So you can use this parameter value system in your material with creating material instances. I will give one more great feature tip that you can use in Unreal Engine, but it's mostly for uh, filmmakers, I believe. For example, you added a camera in your scene and you will shot a scene or you're just going to take a screenshot, doesn't matter, but you want this particular camera to be like a physical camera, like with the same. For example, you have a cam camera in your mind, like maybe Red, maybe Ari, my maybe Sony, or maybe Canon. Doesn't matter. So how are we gonna turn this digital camera into physical with some settings? So let me show you. Just click your camera. And in the film back settings, as you see, there's a sensor width and sensor height. And we changing the parameters with millimeters. So let's find a camera together. So I just type Sony A7R3 sensor size. And it, as you see, it's 35.9 to 24 millimeters. So we will get this uh, millimeters and we will put into our camera in Unreal Engine. 20, 35.9 and 24. So we have basically the same sensor size with this physical camera, which is Sony Alpha 7R3. And there's some different settings. For example, uh, the diffraction limited aperture is 7.3. We can change the aperture from current aperture in here. For uh, pixel dimension, you cannot do so much thing, but you can change your render resolution with the same size with this camera. 
it is not going to be the same, but if you need to have some physical camera settings in your digital camera, you can use this feature inside of Unreal Engine. A little tip from the scene, uh, it's a keyboard feature in Unreal Engine. Let's say you have something in the air in your scene and you want to snap to near a surface or to the grid, to the, uh, your terrain or your plane. How are you gonna do that? How are you gonna do that? Just press the object, you wanna snap it, and just when you press end in your keyboard, it will automatically will go to snap to the layer. I think it was enough for this video. I wanna make a series about some little tips in about features in the Unreal Engine. So if you liked the video, please like it and subscribe to the channel. I'm re reading your all of your comments, so comments help a lot. Thanks for watching, until the next video, see you all, I hope you all did great work.